I have to tell you guys, if there's ever been a time more appropriate to share Jesus with people, it is right now. As you see in our nation, the attack against Christianity is just getting more and more blatant and obvious. The enemy isn't even trying to hide it anymore. Have you noticed that it seems like Everywhere you turn, there's a mockery being made of Christianity. There's a mockery being made of Jesus and what he did on the cross. And most recently, this that our president chose to do on the same day that Jesus rose from the dead, on the same day that we look to and acknowledge and celebrate what Jesus did on the cross, and then he rose again on the third day, that he might take away the sins of the world. He named it Transgender Day of Visibility. Guys, this is not ironic. We're seeing this in the film industry. We're seeing this in the music industry. It's okay to mock and make fun of Christianity. Our faith doesn't matter as much as somebody else's faith or other religions, or so it seems. That's the way it seems. We see this mockery of Jesus in the media, and it's it's fine. It's no big deal. Nobody even winces at it. But if we were to do that about somebody else's faith, not only would it be discrimination, it would be a hate crime. It would it'd be an uproar. Completely inappropriate. Completely uncalled for. But it seems like there's this trend going on where it's okay to mock Jesus and it's okay to make fun of Christianity. And guys, this is a sign that we are in the last days. This is what's called the Antichrist spirit. We're seeing people like Jay-Z make movies that mock Jesus. The Book of Clarence is an incredibly blasphemous film. I would not recommend you watch it. We look at the rapper Lil Nas X who came out and said, oh, I'm a Christian now, but then he releases this album completely mocking Jesus. He was trolling Christians, trolling people. He's wearing a dress. He's got these long fingers fingernails here, this man, and this necklace that says what it says. If you just look through, he's obviously mocking Jesus. This is not uncommon. This happens all the time. He has 666 here on his shoe. You know, all of this stuff is just crazy demonic, just blatant and open. Don't want anything to do with your Jesus. But more so than just being atheist, it's I'm going to openly mock it, and I'm going to do it right in your face. Then we have Taylor Swift, who has a song called False God. Out of all the things Taylor Swift has ever written about and that there is to write about, she typically writes about past relationships and love. And like most songwriters, there's so many things that you can write about. But now suddenly she's talking about false God. Let's just read this little paragraph here, but we might just get away with it. Religion is in your lips. Even if it's a false god, we'd still worship. We might just get away with it. The altar is my hips. Even if it's a false god, we'd still worship this love. And if you go all through it, it's all these religious sayings and quotes. But the last lines are, still worship this love, even if it's a false god. Even if it's a false god, still worship this love. So my question is, why? Why does everything have to come back to false gods, religion? Um, It's got mentions of faith in here. We're mocking Jesus. We've seen at award shows, The Last Supper, that they're doing all these sketches and skits that are mocking Jesus. Jesus on the cross. There's these demons running around stage. We've seen these displays over and over and over. And we have to ask ourselves, what's going on? This is the Antichrist spirit. 1 John chapter 2 warns us about this. He says, Children, it is the last hour, and as you've heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. This was thousands of years ago. And he's talking about many Antichrists has come. So how much more so now? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are not of us. Remember what I talked about in my last video. The oppression that we are going to face as Christians isn't going to come from the world outside. Yes, they're mocking. Yes, they're making fun. But they're setting the stage. It's going to come from the religious people. 
Joe Biden, the president, claims to be a religious man. He claims to believe in God. He claims to have faith. We see what the Pope is doing. We see all of the religious things that are happening in the world that are anti-Christ in nature. And Hollywood and the music industry are just further pushing this agenda from a different angle. That Jesus is not the way, truth, and the life. That there are other versions of Jesus. Look at the Super Bowl ads. We paint an incomplete picture of of Jesus, this tolerant, woke Jesus that just came to love everybody and give everybody a hug, a Jesus that's okay with sin, a Jesus that doesn't care about sin. Do whatever you want, live however you want, it's fine. We have to zoom out sometimes and notice the world is setting the stage for the capital A Antichrist to enter the scene. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. It says, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, talking about the great falling away, the great apostasy, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Another reason we can be sure the rapture is not happening on April 8th. We haven't seen these things yet who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. And that's another topic for another day. But this Antichrist is going to show up on the scenes. And what we are doing now in America and in other countries throughout the world are we are setting the stage. They're setting the stage for the Antichrist to come. They're trying to tear down the image of Jesus, tear down who Jesus is, tear down the Christianity that exists in our nation, the people that believe in Jesus. They're trying to get you to look at them as fools, as idiots, as morons, as wackadoodles, as these old school religious people who are coming against all of our progression and change that we're trying to accomplish. They're getting in the way of peace. They're getting in the way of unity. Those Christians are the problem. We have to remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they hated me, they will hate you. And guys, we are on a road towards the persecution of Christians. We look at the Iranian church. We look at the church of China. We look at churches overseas and see the persecution that they're going through and we pray for them and say man my heart goes out to them i can't imagine but it is coming this way i don't say that to scare you but rather prepare you there is coming a day when the crowd is going to choose barabbas barabbas means son of the father every little detail from Jesus going to the cross matters. Son of the Father. This was a counterfeit Son of the Father. We know Jesus was the true Son of God, the true Son of the Father. But the religious people of the day are going to stir up the crowd and say, we don't want this real Jesus. We don't want this Son of God. We want this counterfeit Jesus. We want to kill the real Jesus. Silence him. Put him to death. That is what the religious people did here in Matthew chapter 27 when they had the opportunity to free Jesus, but instead they sent him to the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I were once this Barabbas before we were in Christ. Jesus took the cross that was intended for us. Hallelujah. But I will tell you this, as the days get darker, as sin abounds, grace abounds all of the more. Our lights as believers is going to shine brighter. We are are that city on a hill. We are that salt of the earth. And the Lord is saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Regardless of what the news says, regardless of what politics say, regardless of what Hollywood and the music industry tried to tell us and shove down our throats, regardless of what these agendas are, I will tell you this, men and women all over the place, all over the world are seeking truth. They are seeking who is this Jesus? What what is the real Jesus like? What is the truth? Do all religions actually lead to heaven or is there something to this Christianity thing? People are more spiritual than ever before. They're open to the pagan stuff. They're open to the new age stuff. They're open to all kinds of spirituality and they're just waiting for you or for me to come and tell them about the person of Jesus Christ. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That accuser, somebody is waiting to hear 
hear what Jesus has done for you. Somebody is waiting to hear your testimony. Somebody has never heard the true gospel of Jesus. They've never heard the true message of grace that we're sinners in need of a Savior. Some people have never, ever heard this. And people are seeking and looking for truth like never before. Then I believe God is calling you and me up in such a time as this, in this hour, when it seems like the world is growing so much darker, Holy Spirit is burning so much brighter in you and in me, and we can make a difference. And this is the time to stand for the Word of God, to stand for what the Bible says, and go be that salt and that light, to love our brother, love our neighbor as ourself, to go and make disciples. I'm telling you guys, people are more open to it now more than ever, but the enemy wants to set the stage. He wants to make it look like it's impossible. He wants to make it look like you'll be mocked and scoffed and made fun of and laughed out of there. And maybe some of us will be, but it can't keep us from trying. It can't keep us from moving forward. And if so, if if that's what happens to us, then like Matthew 10 says, we'll kick the dust off our feet and keep moving on because somebody out there is truly looking for change. They're looking for truth and they need Jesus. I hope this encourages you today to share the word of God with somebody, whether it be a family member, a coworker, a friend, whatever. But guys, this is our time. This is our time to shine. As the days get darker, we as believers are going to shine brighter in the name of Jesus. There's so much work to do. So let's be the hands and let's be the feet of the body of Christ. If you're not subscribed, I would truly appreciate it and hit the like button. That's the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube to send this video out to more people so they can hear this very, very important message. But anyway, thank you so much for spending your time here and watching this video today. And I will see you in the next one.